Colorado's Week 2 matchup against Nebraska is already turning into a marquee must-watch game, and I'll tell you why fans are going so crazy about this matchup on today's episode of Locked on Buffs. You are Locked on Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? This is Locked on Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Borba. Um, Today's episode, we're going to be talking about Colorado, Nebraska. Um, The matchup is getting super intense online between fan bases, and apparently it's getting pretty competitive in the the ticket purchasing aspect of the game. Um, We're also going to be talking about Colorado's possible move to the Big 12, which apparently could happen soon. So if you can't, if you're listening to this, I'd put little quotes on soon because that's what the report said. And then I'm going to talk about Colorado's quarterback recruit, Danny O'Neill, who recently earned an amazing honor um, just a couple days, or I guess yesterday now, um, just on Thursday, was we'll say. Uh, so we're going to talk about all these things today. But before we do, I want you guys to th- I want to thank you guys for listening to Locked on Bus, uh, making it your first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Um, so thank you for sticking around. Okay, let's dive in. Colorado, Nebraska, um, obviously it's a rivalry game. It's a rivalry that's kind of being rekindled. They haven't played since 2019. Uh, Colorado's won the last two, but Nebraska leads the overall series. Um, This year's matchup is a little different because Colorado obviously has Dion coach Prime Sanders um, coaching his first. This will be his first home game um, as the Colorado head coach. This is his first season as Colorado head coach, if you didn't know. And then Nebraska, they have a new coach in Matt Rule, former Baylor, Temple, and very unfortunate Carolina Panthers head coach. Um, they will be squaring off in a battle of two programs looking to return to being relevant in college football, I guess you could say. Um, a battle for relevancy. And they play week two, um, which is a week Colorado plays. It's a week after TCU, their TCU matchup. Um, it's their first home game, like I said. Uh, but it is probably one of the more anticipated games of the season. 24-7 sports has already tabbed it as a game that will be must watch um, one of the better games to look out for because obviously we have Texas, Alabama. We have early week one games like LSU, Florida state, Florida, Utah, but this game has a little more, there's anticipation behind it because I think there's a lot of animosity that people did not realize. Um, So while the coaches are new, the fans, you guys have been chomping at the bit for this entire time. Um, You guys have been kind of beefing online and, I came across a interesting report by front office sports that the average ticket cost is about $400, which is more expensive than the Kansas city chiefs home opener, Nebraska's home opener by 22 times, um, which I'm sure Nebraska plays some random cupcake program. Uh, Let's see who they play. Let's see who they play week one. Oh, not a cupcake program. They play Minnesota. Interesting. Well, people aren't lining up to to watch PJ Fleck row the boat, um, I guess. <laughs> but so it's 22 times more than Nebraska's home opener. Um, it's more than the Celtics Heat game five last night, which the Celtics won. Um, and then the Golden Knights stars game four hockey. Uh, more than that. And then it costs more than <laughs> this is pretty crazy. For a family of four, an Nebraska's average average mortgage, which is pretty insane. I didn't realize cost of living was not that not as expensive in Nebraska. I guess maybe maybe California is not the move. Um, <laughs> but there was so much demand for the tickets that, and I want to preface this by saying I thought the website crashed. I didn't realize it was a queue. The there's so much demand that it put people into queues because there's just so many people trying to get tickets. And then according to ticket website, tick pick, um, that's a dangerous name right there. The average purchase price of a ticket to watch the buffs one and 11 team last year was $72. The average purchase price for the week two matchup against Nebraska is $461. So obviously there's a lot of anticipation around this game. I think the fact that one, it's obviously Coach Prime's first game as the head coach, uh, first home game as the head coach. Two, it's a rivalry game. Um, Colorado's won the last two. Nebraska is a little salty about that. And three, 
There's been some Matt Rule fired a jab at Nebraska earlier this offseason about the transfer portal stuff. Uh, he never directly said it about him, but it was pretty fairly obvious that um, it was about Coach Prime. If you don't think it was about Coach Prime, then I think you have uh, some issues kind of reading between the lines because it was very much so directed at something that Coach Prime had said uh, about the transfer portal opening. So there's been some back and forth, some exchanges, some blow to blows uh, between the two. Co- I, well, I guess between Matt Rule. I don't think Coach Prime has really said anything. Coach Prime has had a lot of people come at him, but he kind of just fires back with a a Bible verse and a like a I'll see you later type thing. Um, but he doesn't really he doesn't really fire back at anybody, which I think I guess I mean if he fired back at everybody that said something negative about him, he'd probably spend more time doing that than coaching football. Um, other thing, this game I think could really help shape Colorado's season because. Let me get my lighting over here. Let me, the good lighting for this point. Uh, this game can help shape Colorado season because if they say they beat TCU and then they come back beat Nebraska, they're probably going to be a top twenty-five team. Should they be a top twenty-five team at that point? I don't know. We like we'll never we won't know how good they are until we see them on the field. But they will be a top twenty-five team. The hype will be insane, and I think all of the the Buffs fans and Buffs craziness will just m- magnify by a thousand. So. That would be fascinating to see. But yeah, week two, go get your tickets, I guess. Go hop in that queue, get your ticket. If, if you're willing to skip a mortgage payment out there in Nebraska, go go do so. Um, I I think it would be a great game to see. You know, Probably one of the better games of the college football slate early on in the season. Um, moving on, I want you guys to know that this episode is brought to you by our lovely sponsors over at Bird Dog. If you're looking for the best fitting shorts, I look great, I feel great. Um, their fabric is stretchy. It's comfortable, um, kind of tight where you need it, fellas. Um, you can wear them on the golf course. You can wear it to a graduation. It's graduation season. Um, you can wear it wherever. Um, they're versatile. Um, people like them to do really anything. You can wear them swimming. doesn't matter. They're the most versatile, comfy shorts out there. Um, so if you want a pair, go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. And when you enter promo code locked on college, all one word, all caps, They'll throw in a free custom bird style or a free custom bird stock bird dogs yeti style tumbler with every order. Again, go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. And when you enter promo code locked on college, they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs yeti style tumbler with every order. So go check it out. Okay. Second thing on the docket today. Colorado to the Big 12. Um, I talked about it a little bit a couple days ago, and it appears that it's gaining more traction. Um, there was a report by the Oklahoman, Oklahoman, I think is how you say it. I don't know. I've never said it out loud, uh, that basically that he talked, according to Barry Trammell of the Oklahoman, he talked to a big 12 source and he said, Colorado is going, is willing to join the big 12 and they're willing to do it soon. Um, obviously this report is coming after or around the same time that, um, Washington state's president called for spending freezes, um, due to the PAC 12's financial issues. And it also comes after the New York post reported that ESPN and the PAC 12 are having no substantive talks about reaching a new television contract. Doesn't mean that ESPN won't be involved, but ESPN's not willing to budge on their number, which uh, there's been reports ESPN's passed on a lot of big things this off season. Um, some MLS stuff, some big 10 stuff, SEC stuff, ACC, whatever it may be. And so obviously they are in a position where they either feel that going all in on a, conf- a conference that's kind of been struggling is not the move, or maybe they just don't feel like they need to budge on their deal. But um, if Colorado was in fact to kind of leave the PAC 12, I think, I think that's safe to say that it would signal the end of the PAC 12. Um, I think Obviously, if Colorado left, the two Arizona schools and the U- and Utah, assuming they still want to be a part of it, uh, the four corner schools are probably off to the Big 12. Oregon and Washington have been linked to the Big 10. They've been vetted by the Big 10. Um, they're kind of waiting, I guess, for that formal invitation. Um, but what from what I've read and what I've heard, nobody wants Oregon and Washington in the Big 10. Don't, be, don't want to be the reason that the Pac-12 dies. Um, so... I don't know if Colorado has that same stance. Colorado was the last program in the Pac-12 to kind of be like, we're with the Pac-12. This is our conference. This is our home conference. So I don't know if Colorado wants to play that role, 
but they were the last ones to say that they were pledging their allegiance to the Pac-12. So maybe they wouldn't have a problem if things get rough leaving for the the Big 12. We'll have to wait and see. The Big the Pac-12 has had some they've had deadlines, quote unquote deadlines, and they haven't met any of them. Um, John Canzano was on the show a while back telling me that telling us that the Pac-12 has had a horrible PR um, stint this entire time. Um, this whole entire process of them trying to figure out how they're going to get a new deal, how they're going to expand. Um, they've constantly playing defense. The Big 12 has been making statements. The Big 12 has been firing shots. Uh, the Pac-12 responds every once in a while, but it just feels like they're they're unprepared. And this is just another instance of the conference looking unprepared. They have to come to a deal. Um, I think off the top of my head, I think it's June or July 2024. There's a certain date. I, I think it's June or July 1st that San Diego State has to leave the Mountain West or petition or so, whatever their process is to leave the Mountain West. Otherwise, their buyout will or their exit price will triple. So the Pac-12 is kind of playing with fire, I feel like. And again, I just don't know what to make of it because I, I saw a report yesterday that the best deal that they could probably get is on the CW with the Apple streaming part as with Apple as a streaming partner. And then maybe ESPN will come in. You can kind of keep ESPN at that, whatever the margin they had, um, because they're not going to get a prime deal with like a Fox sports or CBS sports or ESPN. Really ESPN could still be in the deal, but they're not going to be like the tier one is what it's called partner, which means that they're not going to be the main source televising their stuff. Um, which honestly, Part of me thinks that being on CW is a bad thing because it's like it's the CW it televises Riverdale. It televises like, do they have? Is that is that really necessary? But exposure, um, the CW is on pretty much every cable network that I'm aware of, um, and obviously the Pac-12 network was. So that's more games on TV, uh, more eyes on TV possibly. Um, two, maybe it's an untapped market that we don't know about. Um, ESPN and CBS Sports have kind of and Fox sports are always duking it out. I think CBS sports has the best production um, of any college football game. I just feel like when you watch a CBS production, it's like everything's more clear. They have more angles. Uh, ESPN solid Fox sports solid, but CBS, CBS sports does. You just can't compare. Um, so maybe CW could bring that passion, bring that those vibes, I guess. But I think having them Apple would help. A lot of people have Apple and I think they'd be willing to get Apple as a streaming service. Um, but yeah, I feel like this isn't where the Pac-12 thought they'd be. And again, if Colorado, I guess, deems deems that the deal is not good enough and they want to go back to their former conference, I guess they they may be the ones to kind of push that first domino. Um, because if one program leaves, I don't think the Pac-12 is going to like they're they're barely. So I feel like they're fine at ten right now, but they're fine because they're waiting for a deal. And then as soon as the deal is done, they're probably going to add San Diego State and SMU. Um, if they lose any more programs, I don't know if there's – where they're going to add Rice. They're going to add uh, Tulane, and that's going to replace other programs as well. I don't know. So tough situation that the Pac-12 finds themselves in. But, again, they haven't been killing the PR game lately, and this is just another example of that. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, what we don't have to wait and see is my thank you for my everyday listeners. My everydayers is what I call you. Um, I appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day, commenting, liking, subscribing, sharing the, the podcast. Um, it helps me, helps the company. And I appreciate you guys. Uh, we're going to be doing starting next week. Next Friday, we'll have a mailbag questions. So make sure to put mailbag questions in the comments below. Um, hopefully I'll have a guest on who could maybe address them with me. Um, but yeah, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, making this your first listen every day. Uh, last subject of the day. 2024 quarterback commit Danny O'Neill has been uh, invited to compete in the Elite 11. He's an Elite 11 finalist, um, which if you're not familiar, the Elite 11 is basically the premier um, call or college football. It was kind of college football, I guess. Premier high school football event for quarterbacks. Um, it's the best quarterbacks, the best of the best competing with each other um, on throws, uh, on the whiteboard they're competing with media stuff everything and so they have like three uh, two days of 
kind of like training and then the last day it's called the open or the opening or whatever i think it's the opening and they play seven on seven um with the other top athletes top wide receivers corners linebackers whatever it may be um they're on a team and then there's an mvp named and then they named the lead 11 because there is i believe their website said 20 ish guys compete so they they pick a number that they feel is right every year and they let these guys duke it out um and danny o'neill is was named as a, a an elite 11 finalist which i don't know if colorado's had any elite 11 quarterbacks before um but uh, right, this would be a huge opportunity for Danny to kind of boost his rankings. Um, according to 24 7 Sports, he ranks as the 620th player in the country, um, the 39th quarterback, sixth quarterback, in, or a sixth player in the state of Indiana. Um, this would be a huge opportunity for him to boost his rankings. Other notable names number one overall recruit, Dylan Rayola, uh, Elijah Brown, um, Jaden Davis. Basically, all the best of the best quarterbacks are going to be there. Um, it's a pretty big deal. And for Danny to kind of uh, earn this opportunity shows that he has a, the, the intangibles. Um, and he kind of talked about it um, with an t- interview with 24 seven sports. He said, I think I was in the sixth grade watching Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields go at it. Ever since then, I wanted to be part of that and be in the elite 11, elite 11, fi- elite 11 finals. Excuse me. O'Neill had a great day earning quarterback MVP honors. And this was when he attended the elite 11 regional camp in ohio last april um which is why he didn't attend colorado spring game but obviously it helped him get to the elite 11 um it says o'neill had a great day earning quarterback mvp honors with his accuracy and touch said 24 7 sports recruiting analyst chris singletary the buffalo commit won the accuracy challenge with a perfect score which was even more impressive when you factor in the conditions with the wet balls this carried over throughout the day as he, as he on point with good mechanics throughout the camp um obviously he he's a little on the smaller side six foot 185 um picked colorado over schools like kentucky northwestern cincinnati west virginia um and then when he said that when he was talking about offensive coordinator sean lewis he he said that they run a high they run the same offense in high school it's pretty similar some of the base foundation stuff that he does they do over there he said he loved my worth at work ethic and and that I have a chip on my shoulder. He said he didn't want me to have someone come in and wasn't willing to compete. He said I knew I was going to come in and compete just by getting to know me. He loves my competitive edge. So Sean Lewis is all in on this guy. Colorado is all in on this guy. And clearly he'll have a chance to kind of introduce himself to the national landscape, maybe bump his raking up. I think the Elite 11, regardless if you actually make it or not, um, it's a valuable experience to just compete in it because you're going against the best. You're going to be coached by very – well-respected call quarterback coaches. Uh, Jordan Palmer's there. Uh, I know Yogi Roth is there. He's not a quarterback coach, but very re- respected in the college football world. Trent Dilfer, who is now the head coach at UAB, I think he's still there. Um, very prestigious event, and for Danny to be invited is huge for him, huge for his family, and it also helps him develop his confidence as a quarterback because when you when you compete against the best, you you know you have a good chance. Um, some notable names off the top of my head. Just in case you're not familiar with the Elite 11, I've competed there. Andrew Luck, Jameis Winston, Jared Goff, uh, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Caleb Williams, uh, Quinn Ewers competed there. Uh, every, Just about every notable college quarterback has complete, competed in Elite 11, um, Tua Tonga Valoa. I think at one point there was 11 starting or 19 starting quarterbacks in the NFL that were Elite 11 members. Um, so it's a huge deal. Um, if you make the elite 11, there's a good chance, um, historically that you go off to become a good pro. Um, it's just a very, very prestigious thing. And for Daniel O'Neill to be a part of it is huge. So if you're a bus fan, make sure to go congratulate him and make sure to go follow along his journey. Um, they, they usually do like a YouTube series. I don't know if it's like right after or not, but, um, the elite 11 finals are June 14th through June 16th in Los Angeles um so yeah if you're maybe they have a fan open to the fans type thing you go check it out i don't know um go check their website for more information but do, just make sure to go congratulate mr danny o'neill he was actually our first guest on locked on bus podcast with john back in the day so um first guest of the locked on buff show is out there killing the game and i appreciate you guys for tuning in and following all all the way from back then till now you guys are the best. Um, this has been another episode of Locked on Buffs. Today we talked about 
Colorado, Nebraska, very intense matchup. Um, so intense that the ticket prices are through the roof. Um, we talked about Colorado to the Big 12, whether it's going to happen or not, we'll find out. And then, of course, we talked about young Mr. Danny O'Neill making it to the Elite 11 as a finalist, um, duking it out for one of the top 11 quarterback spots in college football. Huge opportunity for him there. Um, so, yeah, a lot of great buffs things. I'll see you guys on Monday. You guys have a great day. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Again, I'll see you Monday. I'm Kevin Borbeth. This has been Locked on Buffs.